A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! Claudius Williams had risen from a poor boy to become known as the fighting prosecuting attorney of Shawnee County. With the aid of the Lone Ranger, he had sent many desperate criminals to prison. Then, in recognition of his achievements, he was elected to the United States Senate. On the eve of his departure for Washington, the Lone Ranger called. I'm sure glad you came to see me. If it hadn't been for your help, I could never have done the things that led to my election. Now, what can I do for you? I just came to wish you well, Senator, and not to ask anything for myself. Very well. But if you ever want anything that I can give you, just ask me. You'll get it. I appreciate it, Senator. I wish you a safe journey and a very successful career. When the Lone Ranger returned to camp that night, he found Tonto waiting with news for him. Oh, who's over here? Still big fellow. And he got news for you, Kim Stumpy. Oh, what is it, Tonto? Well, when you go to see Senator Williams, he go to town to buy supplies. Yes, I know. I'll be here, a man named Dagger Smith get killed in prison. Dagger Smith killed? Isn't that right? Him have fight with other prisoner. Him get killed. Wasn't Dagger Smith supposed to have a young son somewhere, Tonto? Isn't that right? Me here boy lived near town of Rock Springs. Him named David. Does he live with relatives? Well, me here boy live with woman who keep many boys for pay. Woman named Belle Foster. Oh, a boarding home. Well, Tonto, I think you and I should ride to Rock Springs tomorrow. Find out who's going to look after the boy. The following day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached a ramshackle ranch house on the outskirts of the town of Rock Springs. And as it was near the supper hour, no one was in sight. In response to the masked man's knock on the door, a slovenly woman in her middle forties opened the door cautiously. Masked? What's that mean? What do you want, Owl Hoot? I came here to inquire about a boy named David Smith. <laughs> we call him Crowface. <laughs> Is he here? Uh, you a friend of his pa's? I knew his father. Heard yesterday his pa was killed in a fight at state's prison. Good riddance, I says. Orneriest critter Could I... Could I see the boy? 
He aiming to pay his keep? No. Then I'm throwing him out of here and good riddance to him, I says, too. Well, what'd you call him? Yeah, I'll call him. Rofi, come here. You taking him with you? Well, that's up to him. What do you want with me? Mm -hmm. Here he is. Crowface, this is one of your paws out, Hoot friends. He's come for you. You you knew my father? Yes, David. I knew him. Then then I'm not going with you. I'll not go with an outlaw. No, listen here, you sassy maverick. Just a moment, just a moment, please. David, do you want to stay here? No. I don't want to stay here. And I'm not going with you. You ain't staying here. I'm not feeding you for nothing. Uh, this is no place to talk to him. We'll take him with us. Come along, David. Lee Silver, easy, big fella. Uh, all right, up you come, Sonny. I won't ride with you. I won't do it. Uh, maybe him ride with me, Kimasabi. All right. I'll ride with you, Indian. But I'll not ride with that outlaw. I'll run away. <laughs> Very well, David. You ride with Toto. All right. You come up. Up you up. Uh, easy, Scout. Easy, fella. All right. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> It was after dark before they made camp and Tonto prepared supper, which the boy ate in silence. The Lone Ranger attempted conversation, but was met with stolid silence on the part of David Smith. Twice during the night, the lad tried to steal out of camp, but he found the masked man to be a light sleeper. A firm but kindly Let hand go. pressed him back upon the blankets. Had no use, David. Don't try it. You better turn over now and get a good night's rest. I hate you. I hate you. When he wakened, the sun was high in the eastern sky. Toto had his breakfast ready, but when David looked around, he saw no sign of the masked man or the great white stallion, Silver. Where is he? Well, him leave early. Go see friend. Him not come back here. He won't be back? I'm glad. I hope I never see him again. Uh, you eat breakfast now. Me make a blanket roll, and then you go with me. All right. I'll go with you, Toto. But I wouldn't go with him. I'd run away. Some two hours later, Toto and David rode out of the hills, and before them spread vast rolling plains. Herds of cattle grazed near a tree-studded river, and in the distance were low-ranging ranch buildings. Where are you taking me, Toto? To your village? No, no. You see ranch house yonder? Yes. Well, no, we go there. Does the masked man live there? No. Him not live there. I'm glad. I hope I never see him again. Oh, masked man treat you good, David. Him not hurt you. Just the same, he's a bandit. I hate bandits. Oh, him, him not bandit. He must be. He wears a mask. Oh, oh, oh. Well, someday you find out him, him good friend. I like you, Tano. But I couldn't ever be friends with him. I know he's a bandit. That mask proves it. They come, Colonel Lane. Yeah, she's riding behind Tonto. Hmm? <laughs> After what you told me about him, I was afraid Tonto might have to rope him to the saddle to get him here. He seemed to have more confidence in Tonto than in me. That's why I left camp before he awakened. I was sure Tonto could get him here. Well, why didn't you tell him who you were? I was partly responsible for sending his father to prison. I'm afraid that if he knew that, he'd hate and distrust me forever. Yeah. Well, now that he's here, you just leave everything to me. He'll have a good home as long as he wants it. They're dismounting now. Thanks, Colonel. I'll go out the back way. I don't want the boy to see me or know I've been here. Not of use, my friend. I'll keep you posted on his progress. Good enough. Tell him where to meet me. Adios. Adios. Well, me say goodbye now, David. He go. I'm going with you. No, no, David. You stay with Colonel Haynes. And live on ranch. I won't do it. I'll run away. He can't keep me here. Well, son, if you want to run off, I'm not going to try to stop you. You won't? Nope. You see, folks on my ranch do as they please. But, uh, you see that little buckskin horse with a Mexican saddle at the hitch rail there? Yes, I see him. Well, if you were bound to run off, I'd suggest that you take him. You'll find riding a lot easier than walking. You... You mean I can have that horse? He's yours if you want him, saddle and all. 
You'll find him gentle and easy riding. Would you mind if, if I got on him and rode over to that school? Well, he's your son. Go where you please with him. I won't be gone long. I'll be back when school lets Well, then I'll expect you for supper. You can meet my cow hands then, son. Maybe some of them will teach you how to use the rifle. Golly. Well, they sure enough, Colonel. <laughs> you bet they will. <laughs> well, adios, David. Bye, Tano. Come back and see me sometime, won't you? Uh, me come back and see you. Adios, Colonel. Adios, Tano. Get him up stout. It was three years later that United States Senator Claudius Williams returning to his home state of Texas for his annual vacation from his duties in Washington, was called on by the Lone Ranger. After a warm and cordial greeting, the senator said, I needed a vacation. Decided to come back home and do some hunting and fishing. Get away from people for a while. <laughs> now, where do you plan to go, Senator? Up to Colonel Haynes' ranch. Guess you know of his place. Yes, I know it. There's good hunting and fishing in the hill beyond his home spread. In fact, Tonnell and I are camped up that way now. I rode down today when I heard you'd come home. Oh, is the colonel going with you? No, unfortunately, he can't make it. He's on a cattle drive. So I'm just taking along one of his guides for company. Well, Senator, I don't want to take up your time. I know how busy you are meeting old friends and so on. It's I... quite all right. I'm delighted you came to see me. Oh, uh, by the way, you never availed yourself of my offer to do you a favor. The offer still stands. Well, uh... That's why I came to see you, sir. I have a favor to ask. Well, my friend, it's as much as granted right now. If it's in my power to do it... It's in your power. That's why I'm asking it. What is it? The position of page in the United States Senate is one of the most coveted honors that an American boy can attain. Yes, you're right. And I might add one of the most sought after because of that fact, too. You see, page boys are not only given excellent schooling but they have the opportunity to participate in the making of democracy. Um, you have a candidate? Yes, Senator, I have. Well, he's as much appointed page right now. I'm proud to sponsor him to my colleagues in the Senate. Yes, sir, he's as fine a boy as I've ever known. <laughs> but, Senator, you don't know this boy. Well, of course I do. You're speaking of your nephew, Dan Reed. <laughs> no, I... I wouldn't presume on our friendship to that extent, Senator... I ask no favors for Dan. Well, then whom do you have in mind? A boy named Smith. Smith. Quite a few people by that name. But I presume this boy comes from a good family, prominent and all that sort of thing. Oh, on the contrary, he doesn't. You and I sent his father to prison. What? He was killed by an inmate soon after. You mean Dagger Smith? Yes, sir. And you ask me to appoint his son as a page in the United States Senate? Yes, I do. My friend, you place me in a very embarrassing position. In what respect, Senator? Well, it's customary. In fact, it's traditional that Senate page boys come from good homes, good families, good background. Oh, I see what you mean, Senator. And I can relieve you of any further embarrassment. How do you mean? I'll withdraw my request. Oh, wait now. Let's not be hasty about this. After all, I've never broken a promise. I said I'd grant any request you ever made of me, and I mean it. My request is withdrawn, Senator. Very well, if you wish it that way. Perhaps it is for the best. It certainly relieves me. I'll be going now. But remember, I did not turn you down. I never break a political promise. And I make but few of them. Yes, sir, I understand. Adios, Senator. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Two days later, Senator Claudius Williams arrived at the ranch owned by his friend, Colonel Haynes. He found it deserted except for a skeleton work crew, none of whom he knew. But he was welcomed by a handsome and stalwart youth of 14. Uh, howdy, Senator Williams. My name's David. So your name's David, eh? Well, well. Colonel Haynes has told me a lot about you in his letters. He thinks very highly of you, my boy. And I respect him highly, sir. He regretted he couldn't go along with you. Yes, I understand he's making a trail drive. Well, yes, sir. He and most of the ranch crew left two days ago. He told me to have everything ready to leave when you arrive. That's fine, David. I'm ready to start out immediately. Uh, where's my guide? Colonel Haynes requested that I go with you, sir. Fine, David. But we'll need a guide and one who can cook. <laughs> I can do both, sir. You mean you're familiar with good hunting and fishing places back in the mountains? Yes, sir. You see, Senator, I have an Indian friend. He and I have hunted and fished all through the mountains. Yes, it takes an Indian to know the best country for that. But about the cooking, since I've been in Washington, uh, well, my stomach's not as good as it used to be. I'm kind of finicky about my food. <laughs> Colonel Haynes told me the foods you like, sir. I'm sure you'd be pleased at the way I prepare them. <laughs> well, doggone. You sure are a smart boy. I have the pack mules ready and fresh horses saddled. Fine, David. Let's get going. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Well, you made good time in the town back, Toto. Ah, uh, be hurrying back to camp. Did you get the yeah. latest newspapers? Ah, uh, your papers. Oh, thanks. Gypsy Bob Davis get out of prison. Gypsy Bob Davis? Isn't that right? Him kill two guards, get away. It in paper there. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yes, here it is. After having served only four years of a life sentence for murder, Gypsy Bob Davis and another prisoner named Joe Hall shot and killed two guards to make their escape from the state prison yesterday. Gypsy Bob, who is considered one of the worst criminals in the country, is said to have been captured by the Lone Ranger and was prosecuted by United States Senator Claudius Williams, then the prosecuting attorney of Shawnee County. That right. Mm -hmm. Me remember, you catch him, and Senator Williams put him in jail. Yes, it was also the prosecution of Gypsy Bob that made Williams famous throughout the state. Gypsy Bob had powerful political connections. No one thought he'd go to jail, but Williams sent him away despite his pull. Uh. And what we do, Kimasabi? We look for him? No, Toto. It says that he is believed to be headed for the Mexican border. Also, there are large posses on his trail. Well, that good. And get him before he can get to border, maybe. I only hope he doesn't take more lives before he's captured. It's my belief he'll not be taken alive. Uh, me come back by Colonel Haynes' ranch. Oh, you did? Why? Well, me leave papers there for Senator Williams. Think maybe him want news about Gypsy Bob Davis. That was thoughtful of you, Tonto. No doubt he will be interested. But have he and David returned from the mountains? No. Ranch cooks say them come back tomorrow, maybe next day. Yeah, they've been gone about three weeks. I'll be interested in knowing how they got along together. <laughs> Me find out. David, tell Tonto. That evening, darkness fell quickly over the mountains and a melancholy quiet seemed to descend with it, or at least so it seemed to Senator Claudius Williams. After a hearty supper, instead of turning in for the night, as had been his custom, he piled wood on the campfire, filled his pipe, and lit it. For a few minutes, he blew smoke rings toward the leaping flames. Then he said, yeah, I've enjoyed this vacation, David. So have I, Senator. Tomorrow morning, we go back. I'll have the mules packed up soon after daybreak. We can leave right after breakfast. David, do you mind if I ask you some questions? No, sir, if I can answer them. Most boys have an ambition in life. I did, I know. What's yours? I want to become a lawyer, sir. You do, huh? Of course, you know I'm a lawyer myself. I practiced until I was appointed senator. Well, yes, sir, I know. But you were a prosecutor. That's right. Made my reputation sending crooks to jail, I guess. Is that what you have in mind, David? No, sir. I want to be a pleader. I want to defend people who are wrongly accused or persecuted. That's a mighty high ambition, son. Most of our great Supreme Court justices have been that kind of lawyers. Yes, sir. I've read about them. Well, how are you going to get a law education, David? You thought about that? 
Colonel Haynes says he'll put me through college. Of course, I'll pay him back when I hang out my shingle and get some cases to defend. Many of the people who need your services will be poor. They won't have money to pay you. Then I'll do anything that's honest. I'm not worrying about that. I'll make enough to pay back Colonel Haynes. Yes, I'm sure you will, David. Say, did you ever hear about the page boys in the Senate? Page boys? Yes, they act as messengers for the senators. Each senator appoints one. They get paid, but most important, I think, they get an education while they work. I never knew that. Who is your page boy, sir? Well, right at the moment, I haven't any. That's why I asked if you'd heard about them. Pardon me, sir. But, yeah. but I hear someone coming up the trail. Well, let's... Yes, there is. It may be some of the colonists from the ranch looking for strays. Oh, yes, yeah, so our campfire. Well, they're welcome. I see them now. Two of them. Hello there. Mind having company? Not at all. Come right along. Glad to have you. I'm not so sure of that, Senator. You see who it is. Cover him, Joe. They're covered. A gun. What's the meaning of this? Just don't go reaching for them hunting guns. Stay where you are, both of you. <laughs> don't you remember me, Senator? Huh? <laughs> Take a good look. Gypsy Bob Davis. Yeah, you know me all right. <laughs> I read in the paper that you were taking a vacation up here. Thought I'd drop in on you. Talk over old times. <laughs> when did you get out of prison? A couple of days ago. I shot my way out. Hey, Gypsy. Yeah, Joe, what is it? Take a look at that kid. I swear I've seen him before. Yeah, he does look familiar. Who is he, Senator? He's my guide. He lives on the Haynes Ranch. Now, you leave him alone. Yeah, I guess we must be mistaken about seeing him before, Joe. Yeah, I reckon so. Anyway, I come up to talk to the senator about old times. Well, start talking, then. <laughs> when you sent me to jail, Senator, I put three marks on the wall of my cell just to remind me of the scores I had to settle someday. Remember Dagger Smith? <laughs> yeah, I see you do. He had three marks on his cell, too. Only poor old Dagger never lived to settle him. Ah, come on, Gypsy, get it over with. Shoot the senator, and we'll take the kid along with us as cover in case a posse picks up our trail. All right, Joe. No, not now, wait. Keep quiet, kid, or you'll get what the senator's gonna get. Please, are you telling the truth? Truth about what? Did this man send Dagger Smith to prison? Sure he did. Why, kid? You know me. Both of you know me. I was afraid at first to admit who I am. Hey, sure I know you now. I used to see you at Bell Foster's boarding range. Well, I'll swear it's Crowface. It's Dagger Smith's kid. <laughs> Why in thunder didn't you tell us who you were? I I was afraid. We heard from Bell a couple of years ago. She said you run off with some owl hole. Did the law get too hot for you, Crowface? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Had to hide out on the ranch for a while, huh, kid? Yeah, that's it. Why, David, I can't believe it. Dagger Smith's boy. David! Did you get that, Joe? <laughs> he called him David. <laughs> Where'd you pick up that handle, Crowface? But you're sure he sent my father to jail? Sure. Him and the Lone Ranger and that Indian Tonto. They did it, Crowface. Crowface? Then before you kill him, I've got to go get a friend. Are you crazy? You're not bringing nobody here. Just a minute, Joe. Who are you talking about, Crowface? He's the owl who took me away from Bill Foster's place. You'll need him. We'll all need him to help us get away from here. Why, you ungrateful... Shut up, you... Uh, Crowface, was this owl hoot a friend of Dagger's? He knew my father well. That's why he came and got me after my father was killed. Then I don't see no reason why you can't go get him. You won't take long, will you? No, I'll be back soon. But don't kill the senator till I get back with my friend. Stay here. Get up, Dad. Get up, here. Well, let's sit down and make ourselves comfortable till Crowface gets back with Dagger's pal. <laughs> Riding in. Ah, ride plenty fast. Kimasabi, me know him. Well, who is it? Me think it, David. It looked like David. He shouldn't see me here. He thinks I'm an outlaw. Uh, me know that. I haven't time to get out of camp. He's seen my horse by now. Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa there! Whoa! What matter, David? I want to speak to your friend, Tano. Now, don't be praised. Him not hurt you. So you're the Lone Ranger. Did Senator Williams tell you? No, sir. Well, who did tell you? Gypsy Bob Davis. Huh? Gypsy Bob told you? Until an hour ago, I've hated you. Not because you sent my father to jail, but because I thought you were a friend of his. I'm sorry it had to happen that way, David. Now, tell me, has anything happened to the senator? No, not yet. 
But he'll be killed unless you get there within an hour. Gypsy Bob Davis and Joe Hall have imprisoned Here's him. Here's Come, Scout. I'll explain how I got away with the drive. Steady, Pete. Easy, me. Easy, 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 fella. Easy. Come on, fill it. Get him up, Scout. Gypsy Bob and Joe Hall and the senator looked up as the Lone Ranger and David walked into the camp. They were surprised to see that David's tall friend wore a mask. Hey, what is this? No one noticed Toto creeping up from the side. This is my friend I was telling you about. I'm glad you waited until I got here before you shot the senator. Why, you... Look out! I'll get you! Oh, you don't, I'll take that gun! Oh. Me take gun! Now get your hands up, both of you. Sir, don't shoot! I've got him up! That's better. You can stand up now, senator. David! David! Yes, senator? You... You brought the Lone Ranger. I realize now I should never have doubted for a minute what Colonel Haynes said of you. The following day, the little party arrived at the ranch of Colonel Haynes, who in the meantime had returned from the cattle drive. Gypsy Bob Davis and Joe Hall were turned over to a group of cowhands to be returned to state's prison. And the Lone Ranger and Tonto bade their friends goodbye. We'll be going now. Easy, steady, big boy. Adios to you. Goodbye. Adios. One, two, three. Get him up, sir. Now, David, do you think you can be ready to leave by morning? Yes, sir. Where, where are you going, David? David's going with me to Washington, Colonel. Uh, to Washington? Yes, as my page in the United States Senate. I'm appointing him on the recommendation of the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Music